we have got Baranduin in front of the camera and I am behind the camera, or no, reverse that. <laughs> Jenny and I in front of the camera, Baranduin behind the camera. We've got Janice uh, doing some moderating from uh, the East Coast. And of course we've got our lovely Gita who um, is on moderating as beadshop.com as well. So we changed the quality up of our broadcast just a little bit, so I'm sorry. We are really working on trying to get our streaming modes all that much better. So I'm sorry if the quality on this, um, on this, though it doesn't look too bad, on this broadcast uh, isn't the best, but, and let me know. I do wanna hear from you guys if you can hear us, you should be hearing us a little bit better, you should be seeing that stream be a little more um, uninterrupted, so thanks you guys for sticking in with us. Okay, so as, let me get my microphone, when we were so rudely interrupted mm -hmm. by our internet connection, um, we were talking a little bit with Jenny, we'll leave that up as a part one to this broadcast, you can hear a little bit about Jen and the wonderful things she does here at beadshop.com, as well as a little bit of her background with uh, stones and beading and our shared love of maker. <laughs> that is correct. All mm -hmm. right. Well, so we've got this and make sure you guys um, to on your devices, turn your sound up as loud as it will go. We have um, boosted everything for sound. So make sure that you um, that your sound is up. And again, I'm sorry, uh, the picture quality, we're uploading at a little bit of a slower rate so our internet can handle it. So the picture is not gonna be quite as clear. So I'm sorry about that. We'll see if we can do anything about that HD later. So um, I appreciate it though that you guys are um, hanging in there with us. So we're getting it right every day, every broadcast, we're getting better. So. Um, I know JP, sorry it's not the best picture, but that's what we're going to go with, um, we're going to go with today. Um, there's a lot of weather here today, but we've, we've got a technician coming, I hope, soon, so we'll have this sorted out. So again, thanks for um, uh, hanging in there with us. Again, I know that sound and picture isn't perfect, but uh, we're going to go with what we've got today. So, uh, we are going to be tackling the uh, Patterning with Stones project today. And, <coughs> pardon me, Patterning with Stones is a project that Emily and I uh, kind of came up with a while back. And it's on our website under Patterning with Stones. And we also have, um, have some other palettes and stuff that I'm going to share. Um, so let's actually jump in. I want to jump in and turn the camera around so you guys can see what we're seeing. Emily's just jumped on. Excellent. So let's bring that around and let's take a look. And so Jen, when we were working on this project, um, I handed you some of the, um, uh, one of the photos that we had. I'm going to let you deal with that, Brandwin. I don't know why I'm micromanaging your fixing there. Um, pretty happy. Oh, great. When we were playing around with the patterning of stones, um, we uh, were talking a little bit about differing um, a little from Emily's original, um, original samples, which are here, right? Yeah. And so these guys were au naturel. Oh, this looks great. Okay, yeah. thanks, Brandon. The Eau Naturelle and the Painted Desert. Um, now in these, when we were talking a little bit about the project, I was talking about how Emily in this, let me get my little pointer here, what she used, get that out of the way, she used a fairly, well not a fairly, a monochromatic palette for her seed beads, right? Right here, those guys and these guys. And she varied it up with the stones. And so when I came to you, Jen, and to Myra, because we've got some other palettes here, I was thinking it would be fun to mix it up and make our stones a more of a monochromatic palette. 
and our um, seed beads more of a varied color palette, right? Mm -hmm. So, and Drea, Drea put her two cents in because, you know, why not? Because it's a great group effort. Here under the project map, if you go into the project map for now for um, our, we we're calling this 1933, this piece, and I'll bring your little pieces in here, Jen, that we've got. Um, Drea came up with, I said, well, we're working with the color palette that's kind of going to be purples and stuff, and Jenny's kind of pulled some things, and I've added some things, and Cara's added some things, and we jumped in, and Drea said, I have a color palette for you to um, to look at. And so we we she sent it over, and I have it right here, and it's in under the project map. You can see it, and we'll add it. Look at that photo. Isn't that just hilarious, that photo? I love it. And the purple tone, so um, Drea said she found this photo. It's a National Geographic photo from 1933. It's Latvian women, I'm reading from the project map now, at a festival in Prague wearing purple dresses with brown feather hats. And I think that there's some kind of like gymnastic group, which is so funny. So when... Um, when Jen pulled out her her palettes and we all kind of added things, we realized that that color palette that we had pulled really um, kind of echoed that 1933 photo. So that's what we named it a little bit uh, after after this photo. So I'm going to let you talk about these in just a second, Jen. But I wanted to back this up for just a moment. So did you have fun stringing these? First of all, yes, I did. <laughs> it was fun, right? Yeah, wasn't too much of a challenge. No, you got into it. Yeah, I'm going to put these over here for now. What I also gave you, Jen, to look at um, earlier, I pulled some pieces out of the old, out of the old archive, the old Kate archive here. This was a necklace that was really some of my favorites to string back in the day. And even now, I love a long necklace. And so I um, pulled these guys out just to give you a little bit of a visual for these. And these are beads that I've had in my collection. This necklace is probably, I don't know, 25 years old. It's an old necklace. But you can see that the um, overall color of these necklaces, like this one reads fairly purple, this one up here reads a kind of a blue and brown, and this one I think also reads kind of a blue. Um, but patterning or not patterning, um, you know, depending on how you want to look at it, sometimes stringing these random types of necklaces can be a little daunting, right? Because you're like, well, what's what? Sometimes falling into a pattern is a little bit, um, is a little bit easier to deal with, right? So I also pulled out, so we're gonna, we're gonna put these to the side for just a second. And then I've got this little thing that I printed out for you guys. And I'm gonna give this to Drea also to put in episode notes. But sometimes I think people always ask, all right, where should I start with something like this? With like a kind of a fairly simple long piece. And so like what we did earlier, we started even though we engineered it a little backwards, this 1933 photo, this was our inspiration um, for this. So when you start to look at color, and there's a couple of things I want to share with you guys here. Um, and these are kind of, I don't know, the fancy terms or fancy words or, you know, uh, things for color. But you hear a lot of times these words kind of tossed around about color. So just to make sure we're on the same page with all of this. Value. So if we're talking about the value of a color, the value is the intensity of color from light to dark. So dark values with black added are called shades, and light values with white added are called tints. So if we bring our ladies back over here and we look at the value of the color here, that this is, um, you know, this purple here, this um, shade of purple is lighter than this shade. So this would more be maybe like a tint if this were lighter. There may be a little bit of gray thrown in there. 
and then that dark value, that purple shade there. The intensity or the saturation of a color refers to how bright the color is. So I would say in this photo, the intensity of the colors are not that high, right? They're not super bright. They are all kind of muted here. And then tone, the general term uh, to describe the lightness or darkness of, of um, the color here. So these are all darker tones rather than lighter tones. That makes sense, okay? Then, just color-wise, our colors, primary colors, and this is when you can get a, um, a color wheel like this. And Janice is also linking in here. Um, we did a great class handout on patterning, and Janice has just linked it as well. Um, and so if we look at primary colors and we look at them on this color wheel, we can see that red, I'm going to put red at the top here, red, yellow, and blue. Those are our three primary colors. And they're called primary colors because they can't be mixed from other colors, right? Red is on its own, uh, yellow is on its own, and blue is on its own. Then we go to the secondary or second level of colors, and that's when primary colors are mixed together to form a second tier. Red and yellow make orange, yellow and blue make green, blue and red make violet. Okay. Then, when you add that primary color and their adjacent secondary color, they're mixed together to form a third tier or a tertiary color. So violet and blue is blue-violet, violet and red, red-violet, and so on. So a color wheel um, is kind of a fun way to get yourself kind of looking at what color, you know, like if you're looking at a monochromatic palette. So when I talk to you, Jen, about maybe putting together things in a monochromatic palette, you can look at the kind of the colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel, and you can see, yeah, that color, those, that color reads kind of yellow or orange. These kind of read blue, blue-green. These read kind of blue to purple. And then when you turn it here, these guys read kind of violet to red. And so the monochromatic uh, palette, I think, is a great way um, and to add shades or different tones of color. I think it's a great way to kind of jumpstart to make something that looks kind of interesting if you don't know where to go with it. Okay, so, and one last thing I want to show you. This is a book that I've been reading because, you know, I like to read. This is a great one. It's the 50th anniversary of the interaction of color, and it's a book that I've always wanted and I've never gotten. And Joseph Albers talks a lot. He's a very famous uh, colorist, and he talks a lot about um, color and how uh, mixing lights and darks and things like that um, kind of... Uh, make differences in how you perceive color and reverse grounding, stuff like that. So it's a really kind of interesting, it's not terribly, um, uh, what do I want to say, exciting? <laughs> it's a little dry in the text, but it's also, I think, really interesting about um, talking about color and stuff, and it has kind of this cool mid-century feel to it. So this is another good one. Um, another good one here. So uh, that's that's how we're doing it. Okay, so that's a little bit of my, um, I don't know, my lecture today on, on color. So I'm going to put these guys aside. But these are all good references. I will give this to Drea to add into the episode notes as well. Okay, and we'll link also that um, Janice's handout that she's got there. Look at this cover. This, we could just palette right from there. That's a beautiful monochromatic palette right on the front. So let's get down to our actual project and how we put it together. So Jen, grab those strands and let's put them in the center here. So what was the first thing that I told you to do with this piece? What did I tell you? To grab um, semi-precious stones, yeah. seed beads, bugles, different shades and finishes and sizes and colors. Yeah, things that just kind of um, spoke to you. Yes. Right? 
and in kind of a, we were going to make these big beads, the monochromatic palette, and then in the background we were going to use some color, some, some color that kind of complemented it. So you pulled this great palette that was awesome, but I wanted to make sure that we had enough for the broadcast. <laughs> so we made yes. some substitutions. So grab that bowl that's over there with all of the, um, with those guys, yeah. Let's bring it to the center. Let's pull these out and let's take a look and I'll tell everybody what we've got there. So pull out each of these guys and we can take a look at what we've got. That guy, this is a six millimeter, right? It's the six millimeter Milky Alexandrite Moon Dust. And then we've got, um, it was actually, it's actually not these. I'm going to put those over there. It's actually these. Let's move these. It's the, um, the um, purple mix in four millimeter, right? And then we've got um, these guys here. That's the four millimeter purple crazy lace agate. And again, I don't think we used these guys, though we could. We used the um, four the three millimeter metallic suede purple, right, in the fire polish. Um, and uh, what else did we get? We've got these guys here. We've got the, um, I'm looking on my list, reading it, reading it twice. It's the uh, silver, um, crazy silver crazy lace, right? Is that guy? Yep, silver crazy lace. And then, I think that was all of the main things that we used in there, right? And yes. then, um, oh, I f and then we used, right, and this one was kind of, this, and I'm going to pull this to the front. This was the Age Brown Stripe Picasso, and it kind of made the bridge between, like, these bigger beads and then the seed beads as well, right? Yeah. And so I think a palette like this, and you can see what's going on here with the variation of um, size of the bead, the finish of the bead, right? We've got some that are super shiny, we've got some that are matte, we've got some that are faceted, some that are just round. And we're also varying in size too, right? So mm -hmm. we've got these tiny three mils all the way up to these big eight millimeter um, in the purple mix right here. So. I also pulled, well, let's continue with the with the seed beads. So then, what did you do? After we kind of cut these guys up, what did you do next? Then I started stringing them. Yeah, well, we mixed the seed beads too, right? And then we strung them. So you made, pull that bowl, that bowl over to the center. Now we've got this cool, uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna throw caution to the wind. Look at that, let's just kind of do this so we can really see them. So, when we, and I love how, and what you did, and I actually pulled them out so we could see them a little differently, you threw everything in this bowl, right? <laughs> yes, Which was awesome. I, I loved it. So, when you, I think that some people get stressed about mixing the beads. Was, was mixing the beads stressful for you? Or were you just like, you know what, I'm just going to dump them? Um, I, I went for the, the dump them. <laughs> yeah, right? Yes. And so for these guys, when we mix our mixes, and I'm going to do a Facebook Live broadcast on mixing, but all we do is, it's kind of fun, um, go ahead and, and, and mix these guys in there. And as you're dumping them in, we'll talk about how the color kinds of kind of changes. So pull whatever you want for the first one. Can you guys see that? Yeah, but maybe we'll do just a little bit. Let's actually put this. Maybe this bowl is a little lower. Just the perfect. Where? Perfect. There, right there. Good. Okay, great. Okay. So with these guys, um, Jen's gonna throw in. This is the which one is that? That's the uh, Picasso Seafoam Green Matte, the forty-five fourteen. Yeah. And we used eleven ounce for all of this. Cause can you see in Emily's original? Um, original one here, how she used just 11s. So we wanted the contrast between these bigger, or what I call say something beads, and the 11 knots to be really noticed. So what do you want to throw in next? This orange. Yeah, that um, that's the dye persimmon. dye persimmon, right? And so we'll throw some of that in. It's the 42, 44. We'll throw that guy in. Look at look at just how those two beads mix together. I just think, you know, it's such a, and 
they're um, they're a good complement to one another here yeah. because if we look at if we just take those two, hold that thought. Where did it go? I'm gonna get my wheel. We can get the wheel back, and we can see that yellow or orange, if we're over here, and blue on the other side, they're on opposite sides, even though it's kind of like this blue, but still they're opposite sides of the color wheel here, right? Mm -hmm. So they're complementary colors. So that is almost a no-brainer to throw it in there like that. So next, what else are we going to throw in? We're going to throw in some dyed gray alabaster. Yeah, the silver lined alabaster. And what's the number on that one? It's the 11-650, which is good. I like these because they look like chia seeds. Yeah, they do, right? Jen also makes a mean smoothie, that's <laughs> for sure. So see how the tone of these beads are also, this gray kind of adds a little bit of a somber tone, mm -hmm. which I think harkens back to our original photo of those 1933 ladies. They are definitely, uh, I think, somber, if you will. So what did you add next? What should we add next in there? Some more depth. Yeah. Some metallic copper. Yes, our metallic copper iris. I love those. The 11-2005. <coughs> Beautiful. And uh, that's exactly right. Look at the depth that it just added in there. And you guys, when we do our monthly mix uh, broadcast that I'm going to do, I'm going to do a broadcast on how, to, how we mix our monthly mixes. This, it's going to be pretty much a repeat of what we've got going on here. This is just how we do it. But look at how great that color mix is. And then for a little bit of interest, we added a bugle. And that's the a matte sage green luster bugle, the um, 2031. And so we'll just add a few of those, right? And so there is our multicolored background for this monochromatic palette. And the this purple this metallic copper iris that pulls the purple of our stones into this palette so this palette kind of makes sense i think without this purple um the metallic copper iris it wouldn't be as effective so i love i love the way this looks i hope you love the way it looks these two also have a different finish than the other beads. Yeah. They're more matte. Yeah, and these are shiny. Right, so we put in some matte and some shiny like we did with this one as well. So mixing and mixing that, um, the difference in color, shape, texture, all of those things will add to your palette. And then you added some of these... Let's add those right into the mix. These four, these guys, these four aughts. Those are the aged brown striped Picasso in a four aught. And look at that, bam. You could just string these up together and it would make a great little slim necklace. I think it would look awesome. So, so then you jumped in and I said, Jen, give me some, give me some strands. Start stringing, would you? And so you did. So what did you, what did you do? I'm going to cut you some of this. You started putting things together just in this bowl, right? Mm -hmm. I just started brainstorming different designs mm -hmm. that I like, patterns. What was the first one that you strung on these three? Do you remember? Yes. <laughs> this one was the first one. And I just loved having this big piece here surrounded by the smaller sizes. Yeah. And I really liked separating them with the bugles and some seed beads. And I have a little bit of a pattern going on yeah. here. Yeah, and what I like, and it's kind of hard to see, but what I thought was so delicate and charming was that you pattern, this is a really nice bold pattern, and then you have this really nice delicate pattern that's here. And really using that, um, persimmon to good effect as little pops of color. I, I really like the way that that looks. And then you were just repeating your pattern. So mm -hmm. this pattern is just, this motif is repeated again here and repeated again here. So if you're not sure what to do in the breaks in between, make a pattern then you, that you like and then keep repeating it, right?
-hmm. And so then what did you string next? Then I strung this one second, and it only has one of those big purple ones for a more um, toned down, delicate style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it also makes it stand out a little bit more, right? Because it's kind of the, the center, mm -hmm. right? And then you did this guy over here. And then I did this one third. And I really liked the orange next to the purple, mm -hmm. next to this um, stone-looking mm -hmm. bead. Right, that silver, silver, silver leaf, right? Use that one. That's really nice. That six, six millimeter is that one. I love it. So now I'm going to get you, so what we strung them on, and so what Jen did was, um, and I think it's also kind of a cool way to do it, if you're stringing, and let's say that we wanted this to result in a long necklace like this, right? Um, I'm going to show you kind of a cool way to kind of put these together um, also uh, when you do shorter pieces like this. So you don't have to commit to a giant, um, to a giant necklace, you can string your kind of small little pieces, and I'm going to show you how you put them together. So why don't you string up um, another one of these for me while you do that, and Brand? I'm going to talk a little bit about um, about when you're stringing something like this. If you guys are um, wary, do you want some tweezers or anything? Yes. Do these? There you mm -hmm. go. That's Jen's stringing aid of choice or those nodding tweezers. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you do it. And I'm going to do this here. I cut, so what I cut for Jen was we're using, I just used this Soft Flex Extreme. I think that in the list, the materials list, we just called for um, regular, um, regular Soft Flex. But the Soft Flex that you choose, whatever color, it doesn't matter at all. I'm using the 0 0.014 here um, because. Um, it's what we had open, and it also gives it a nice, flexible quality to it. Um, but again, I'm using the fine, the .014 here. Um, so when you're stringing something like this, uh, you can see Jen is um, just going for it and just jumping in and stringing. The soft flex we don't need a needle for, right? It's plenty um, stiff on its own. I'm gonna do, you know, with this stack here, um, I'm just going to start putting a few of these on as well. And one of the things when you're doing a necklace that you want kind of controlled randomness, putting in things that have intentional, <laughs> there's your little, I like that. there's controlled your, ran there's your randomness. Right? controlled randomness, right? You can start putting things in like intentional repeats. And you've seen me do this before. Intentional repeats for me, um, kind of make things, I think, look visually pleasing, but yet um, have a little bit of, I don't know, a little bit of randomness to them. When something I want to point out is negative space. So as you're coming you along, up, uh, I sure can. Yeah. Me? Thank you. Both of us? Yeah, Both go. of you, actually. Both of us? Yeah. There I we go. I know, I'm just focusing All on right. I'm going to put, I'm going to pull one of these old necklaces that I have here. Okay, so can you see, this is just a bunch that I did with vintage glass a while back. And you can see if we examine it kind of closely, I've got some Hishi. Even then, I was a big fan of using um, Hishi as spacers. Um, then, there we go, I wanted to make sure that I saw all of your comments. I've got some different seed beads going on here. I've actually got Delicas. I've got some hematite colored ones, I've got some purple iris ones, so that my background palette is pretty dark. But then, as I lay my beads in, I start to think about what the negative space, not only the shape that the bead is giving me, there's kind of a little bit of a twist bead here, like that. Um, there's a bead that's kind of like this. So it's not only the space that the bead is taking up, but it's the space that's around the bead as well, okay? And so your negative space then, these beads are kind of 
elongated or separated by all of the seed beads here. So this automatically also gives your eye interest. So we're seeing the shape here, but we're also seeing the negative space around the bead. So creating um, intentional repeats like Jenny did here, or, or specific um, patterns here, you can see that negative space that those beads create. I really, that's, that's some, something to think about. Um, I also, and you can make these on a heavier scale or a thinner scale as well. These again are from my pieces that I did so long ago. These beads are a little chunkier and all of the beads are kind of the same size. They all hover around the eight millimeter range, right? Eight to 10 millimeter. But what we did here with Jen's, and I'm going to put pull her example in here, you can see that we've got some bigger and some smaller. So we're varying in size too as well. And the ones that seed beads in between each one. So everything was very um, was very measured. Everything was very equally equal distant from one another. Okay, with these five. What Jen did here with this, she also made things, or the kind of the stations, be equal distant because she used this same repeating motif, which I love. I love how you put the bugle in the center and it's flanked by these orange ones. It's kind of nice. And so it's a good repeating pattern for it. So again, we're being controlled chaos, right? Controlled yes. chaos, exactly. That's how it feels sometimes in the fulfillment room. Controlled <laughs> chaos. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> and so M also used these flat coins here. And again, it makes some nice negative space around that. These are so good. I just want to look at, I just want to touch these and look at these all day. I love them. I think they're great. Um, then I also grabbed uh, a couple of, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move these aside. I'm going to move that back to you. I'm going to move that back to you. I want to share a couple of other palettes that we did that Myra actually um, put together. And I'll be honest, you guys, I haven't even really looked at these um, since Myra put them in the bins. We listed them, but I'm going to dump this out. And I said, Myra, give me something in browns. Okay, and so she goes, okay, Kate. And she put these in a little bin. Push them up just so a little bit. I'm gonna move this over. So this is also a way that you can start by just creating something with a monochromatic palette. So here are these. This is what Myra did, and I'm gonna. We've got them all listed out for you, and Drea will put them all in the episode notes. But I'm gonna do that here. And I'll do that here. And then, Brand, would you hand me the list, the brown tones list, if you would? You guys would laugh at to look at what this, what our table looks like now. Can you, am I over too much? Where should I put this? Maybe if I put it here. How's that looking? Okay. So Myra pulled these kind of fun, and this is perfect for patterning with stones, especially if you want kind of an overall monochromatic palette, right? So she used, in the seed beads, she started with these guys, and she did the dyed silver, dyed rose bronze silver lined alabaster, it's the 8-641, and then the silver lined gold AB. Now these two beads, if you just even look at these two, and thinking about why would you choose these two beads and put them together? Well, they're both kind of shiny, but one is a darker tone, one is a lighter tone. She did the same thing here by repeating a light and a dark with the metals. And she also varied up the size. And so these guys are um, the gilding uh, the gilding mat, and then the, um, the gilding metal, the, the gold one here. And these are both 11 knots here. Um, and so those, again, just this little color palette, it's beautiful, looks great. Then she added, she started to add some beads. 
This is that three millimeter opaque white turquoise. Again, a three millimeter bead, you guys, three millimeters and two millimeter beads are like staples in my bead stash, I think. They're a little bit larger, sometimes a little bit larger than a seed bead, but they have, especially these fire polish, have a nice, um, I don't know, a nice facet, a nice finish. I just, I love these guys. Then she went and she continued with the fire polish in the four millimeter crystal copper rainbow. Beautiful. And a, four, a third color, or a third um, fire polish, the opaque yellow copper Picasso. Right. So we're still using all kind of smallish beads here. So let's add some bigger beads in six millimeter. Myra chose both the iris brown and the chocolate bronze. We added some depth to that palette here, right? Because this was all kind of light in shape. So we added a little bit of a darker tone there. Then, really punched it up. Five millimeter rondel and ivory mercury. Beautiful. And again, that lightens everything up. Everything here, though, is fairly opaque. There's no transparency to it. So adding a big, the eight millimeter rondel in light Colorado. See how that adds some airiness to this as well as some size, some bulk. And then more bulk with the 10 millimeter yellow jig is unusual and perfect. Some picture Jasper faceted rondelles to give it a little more facet. And then everyone's favorite. When in doubt, I say, when in, what do I always say? When in doubt, have lunch. No, I say that too. When in doubt, put on red lipstick. I say that too. When in doubt, add a freshwater pearl. That's what I really say. Okay. And so here's this. I think this palette is just super dreamy. Now we could make anything out of this. You could do a patterning with stones like we're doing here. We do, you know, the Gatsby necklace style that we do. Um, you could string it into just a multiple strand bracelet like the our, our cuff bracelets that we string. There's so much that you could do just with this simple palette. I think it's just gorgeous. Um, I think Myra did a great job with this one. I'm gonna take this handful, this delicious handful of beads, I'm gonna put it here, and then I'm gonna pull this green one, and I'll just touch on it just very quickly, and then um, we'll get down to actually some mechanics of these pieces. I can feel you guys are all intently watching. Super. There's not a lot of chatter. People are all, what's, what's going to happen next? Well, I'll tell you. Let's dump this out. Okay. Ooh. This one, right? It's so, and it's perfect for the first day of spring. So happy spring, all of this my darlings. A little bit up. A little bit up. Yeah, little bit up. So the first thing, I don't know, did Myra pull this first or last, the Primavera? Do you remember? I think she made this and she went, this just goes with Primavera. I think that I think was that's how it happened. The end. The end. Yeah. So you guys remember our Primavera? It's our monthly mix for this month that Cara did. So what? And I think since Myra, I think Myra was the one that tubed it. She has the Primavera mix in her brain. I think. So something for spring. What Myra started off. Let's start with the seed beads, but without the Primavera. So here is this. Um, the 8-4215 um, uh, it's the Duracoat uh, galvanized sea green uh, and I love these Duracoats um, the galvanized ones are just the, the brilliance of these um, are just great and then she added uh, just like we grabbed for the other one that bugle the metallic um, sage green luster bugle then uh, the gilding metal, this gold. And again, these, they look beautiful, right? Just together, gorgeous. And then Myra went right to the rondelles and two of them she pulled. The green opal, which is this one. And look at the finish on that green opal, gorgeous. And then the sky blue Picasso. And again, a monochromatic, these are shaping up beautifully. Then she went in and added because all of this is shiny, with the exception of these guys. She added a matte green adventuring, right? And that matte green, I think, um, gives some depth 
to, we use depth a lot when we describe our palettes, but it does, it kind of calms things down from being so bright. Then, um, and these are ones I'll have to, I'll confess, I, since they're on our wall and when I'm designing, they're kind of low down on our wall, so I kind of forget them. So I don't want you to forget the faceted rondelles that we carry. We used the, um, these guys, the Picasso Jasper ones, or the Picture Jasper ones, rather, in the last palette. Myra chose the um, Moss Agate ones in this palette, and Moss Agate is one of my favorites, too. Then, uh, another one that I don't always gravitate to because, again, it's kind of low down on the wall, so I don't see it. Um, the 4 millimeter Olive Jade. And, you know, you guys pulling these palettes, it was really funny. You guys pull product all day long, and I feel like you see things that we don't always see. Because, mm -hmm. seriously, I could walk by this Olive Jade all day <laughs> and go, we have the speed? So... Um, so it's great that you guys pulled those. And then this one, I think we missed this one on this list. This is, do you know what that is? Oh, that no, looks like Aquamarine Celestian. Celestian, six millimeter, I think, six right? Mil that's what it looks like. Yeah. And in the six mil, we'll add it to the to this list. And then we have the Olive Jade and the Natural Jade in here. So... Myra pulled all this together, and then she was walking by Primavera, and look at how Primavera nestles itself so beautifully. It's a perfect spring palette, I think, for this. Oh, yes. And so, you know, it's just play around with, and do this at home with your, um, with your, uh, with your stash, you know, and, um, I don't know, add to it and stuff. You'll be surprised, I think, with how uh, the colorways that you come up with. Okay. So I want to show you uh, how I want to link some of Jenny's pieces together in order to make them a long necklace. So I'm going to move these beauties. I'm loath to put these back. I just want to. Janice is causing havoc on both YouTube and on Facebook oh. here. So we're just, <laughs> Janice is popping in to say hello to all of our Facebook people as well. That's great. You know, it was so nice to have Janice here last week doing her thing. Excuse me while I just reach in there. Um, it was great. We have uh, some new projects that Janice is coming up with. And so don't worry, you guys, she'll be back. But it was fun um, being on air together. It is, we always say, it's like old home week when we're together on this. If you did miss last week's broadcast, it's up on YouTube and on our Facebook page. Um, so you'll, you'll see that there. You can go ahead and watch it. Janice did such a terrific, uh, a terrific project. We had so much fun. Um, putting that piece together. So um, so we've got, uh, it was fun. And we see a lot of you guys um, posting your malas and stuff. And make sure that you also watch our free tip Friday um, as well as kind of the, the companion piece when we do the rest of the malas for that. So, um, oh, and this was somebody's comment, Ellen, you just made. And I think this is a good comment as well because it's something that I also say that I do. Uh, Ellen wants to add sh that it's a good idea to include colors that you may not normally gravitate to That's in your I'm bead saying. stash, right? Because when you're designing, oddball colors can really make your palette sing. And so that kind of oddball color, I think, in this color palette is that persimmon, kind of. You know, it really pops everything together. You know, as you can see, I always gravitate towards the same three colors, so I need to break out of my color mold. That's for sure. Um... So let me look at the clasps. I'm going to talk about the clasps and this little closure. So to put a necklace like this together, in Emily's piece that she did, and by the way, just a reminder, mark it on your calendars next week. I've got a giant jumble of beads on my desk here. Mark it on your calendars next week. Who's going to be here next week, Jen? Emily. 
Yeah, you're like, I don't know. Sorry, I was in the zone. <laughs> She's all, I'm stringing. I was in the stringing why zone. Why are you even talking to me, Kate? Yes, why, Emily. Why are you even talking to me? Let me string. Um, yeah, Em's going to be here. And we have, I may or may not be wearing the project that she's going to be doing. But um, but I'll, uh, I'll talk about a little bit about it at the end. So this piece that Em had, that Emily did both of these patterning with stones, um, the way that she strung them, she strung them on soft flats, and then uh, the way she closed them, if I can even see it, there it is. She crimped and covered it with a crimp cover. Okay, so it's all one long piece. So these pieces that Jen has just strung up, they're all, they're about six inches-ish in length, six to seven inches probably, maybe a little longer, doesn't really matter how long they are. But I think it will be, oh, here's the soft flex. Go ahead and, whoops, oh, I took my little beads off of there while you string. You get going. Um, a way to um, link all of these together, I want to measure Emily's and see how long Emily's is. So Emily's necklaces are about 66 inches long-ish. And so something like that you can wear kind of, I, I think what Emily meant to do here was you can wrap them, I think, over your head at least twice and maybe sometimes three times as well. So they're really easy to wear. They just wrap. You don't have any, um, you don't have any clasp to contend with. But for this one, I thought I wanted to add a clasp. I wanted to mix it up a little bit. And I'll be honest, I couldn't find a clasp that I wanted to use, honestly. I thought a toggle, I don't know. I don't know what I wanted. So I went to, when in doubt, like I always say, when in doubt, add a pearl. My other adage is, when in doubt, add a swivel clasp. I love a swivel clasp. I love that they have a slim line to them and they look substantial. I think they have kind of a nice designery kind of feel and they swivel like this. So they're very easy to wear on a piece, especially if you're gonna wrap it around several times. Now, Brian, would you hand me the, the bowl of chain over there? That's our chain called Join Hands. And we've used this before in several projects, um, but I thought I could have used some of our soldered rings to go with this clasp, but I thought I want to be something, I want to have something a little different for the closure. So like we like to do, um, which is utilize chain down to its components rather than just chain, um, I thought I would use it as the other side of the clasp. So I'm gonna cut this guy away. And actually, I don't even have to cut it. Let's say that you were really wanting to save your chain and not waste a moment of what you had here. We could simply just open up this chain, which is what I'm gonna do here. Take it off, take that little barbell off. You've seen me do this before. Take this link off and you've got a charming little crimp that you can use for like your leather or something like that. Or you could kind of put those guys back together and stuff too, but you've got those little components. So I haven't cut anything. Now for the closure, what I did then, and I think this ring opens. Let me open it up, see if I can. Yeah, we have the swivel clasps, you guys, in two sizes. We have, is it called small swivel? I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the regular swivel. Yeah. We have them in two sides. These are, this one's the larger one. Let me close that up. I need to get it in my field of vision. There we go. So this and this are now the full clasp ready to go. Okay, just like that. So this is ready. And so this is the, the hook and then the loop for the clasp. So, oh, and we also have the round and round. Janice is saying that one. The round and round is great 
but the round and round is a hook that um, is permanently open. So for this, I wanted something um, that closed up, but the round and round clasp is something that we use on our Tahoe projects, and they are delicious. They're beautiful, a really great um, substantial and heavy clasp. So let me close this up and I'm gonna pair this one with that copper one there. So I know you're still saying, well, Kate, how are you gonna put this together? Well, I'm making that up as we speak. No, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing. Jen, thank you for laughing at my jokes. At least somebody does. Somebody around here thinks I'm slightly amusing. I don't know. Oh, I here's all the I'm missing all the comments here. Sorry you guys. I didn't see the Facebook comments. Just double checking everybody's thing. There we go. Great. Let's close this one up and I'm gonna attach it. Looks like our feed is doing better, Brandwin, right? The, the we've video had a few, quality we've isn't had amazing. A couple of interruptions. But, okay, but we're doing all right. We're yeah. still we're still on there. And you guys, when you watch the replay, if we've had some interruptions with this, the replay will be fairly seamless, I think. So um, again, thank you for sticking with us in there. Um, we we're in the heart of Silicon Valley, and yet we can't quite seem to get blazing fast internet, but we're working on it. So, um, so thank you. We really appreciate you viewing and a big hello to our new viewers and a big thank you. It's always great to see you to our regular viewers. So thank you again so much. I'm going to isolate or take off one of these sections, just like I did for the closure here. Now you've been seeing, um, you've been seeing uh, on our homepage. If you've been looking on our homepage at beadshop.com, um, our bullion wire, right? And Janice did a bullion wire episode a while back, and it was amazing. And we love the bullion. Sometimes, though, and we also have Brand. Would you hand me the crimps and stuff over there? Um, we also use all this right, right there. Those oh, boxes. Yeah, we're co reconnecting right now. Okay, reconnecting, reconnecting. Here we go. Though so YouTube is oh, good. We lost connection. Oh, we did on yes. um, Mevo is completely lost connection. Oh, let's see if we can start. Well, the Mevo is still. See how the Mevo is still filming. So this is what. Mm -hmm. You. Mm -hmm. We're still live streaming. You can see, but we can't see it on there. So, um, can you guys still see us on your phone? And you can see us on your phone, right? Um. So, we're going to have to just, we're still going on Facebook. So, I'm going to still try and stay okay. here. Um, and we'll just have to run everything. You'll have to see it on your phone. That's what happened last time. So, we're just, we're just going to let that stay like that. Okay. And we're just going to keep going. We're gonna keep. We're keeping. We're keep so going. Just keep moving. Just into keep the center. Into the center. Yep. Yeah, this is where we're going. We can no longer move the camera. Um, so you guys can see. Let me get to. I'm gonna move this over because my hands need to be up here and here. There we go. So um, you guys have seen our um, right. And the um, bullion wire also does the same thing. What they do is they cover the loop, the soft flex loop, so it's not visible. So okay. Unfortunately, I can't zoom in on you that. You know what? You could with the maybe if you put okay. the camera down. Maybe if we move the camera that way, maybe, and then we'll see what happens. We'll let our other camera, our feed, catch up with us. Uh, so this closure goes over, yeah, look at that, Fran. Yeah. Closure goes over uh, the soft flex and keeps the kind of hides the soft flex and keeps the soft flex from rubbing around. So I, um, let's see if, Fran, if you can get it a little bit over here to me. And then, yeah, let's try that. And then I'm going to connect. So what I do sometimes, instead of bullion, or a wire guard 
I use seed beads. I know, collective gas. It's crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna steal, um, I'm gonna steal these seed beads right here. And Jen, I'm just gonna use one of your strands that you've done. Okay. I'm gonna do this guy. So I'm gonna start by connecting one half of, uh, or one side of Jenny's piece. I'm gonna connect it to the clasp on this side. Okay. Am I in? Do I need to move over? I can see. I think I'm there. there. Okay, great. Unfortunately, the it's hard to know. I know, it's hard to see. So I'm going to go ahead, just like we would normally, and I'm going to crimp this off. Now, we've got a lot of crimping um, how-tos on the web um, under our soft flex, how to crimp your soft flex, um, how to use crimp beads. Um, all that's pretty simple. But I'm going to put this on, and I'm going to take this guy off, that tape holding it. And I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use one bigger bead at the end. This is our uh, four millimeter Crazy Lace Agate. Then I'm going to put on a crimp tube, like so. Now, you guys, I'm going to use some 11 knots. Let me get some out of this bowl. And I'm just going to use a varying group of colors here. And I'm just going to string as quickly as I can and about as much as I need to make a little loop. I'm going to do one more and then I'll count them and tell you how many I have. This is two, four, six, eight. I think I need about ten. There's nine and here's ten. Okay. Now I'm going to come around, I'm going to come around the I'll come around this side of my clasp. I want to make sure that my seed beads go through, and they do. I'm going to come through my crimp tube. Whoops, I I popped one seed bead, but that's okay. It's not right now broadcasting. Okay, mm. there you're back. You're I'm back. back. I'm good. We're, we're going to... I'm going to keep going through. So you might have to see. Yeah, I'm going to crimp that down. Then I'm going to close it up, fold it. And I need to get it, sorry you guys, I need to get it into my field of vision so I can see to close it, and then I'll move it back to you guys. It was a little far away from me. So I crimp, and then I fold it over. There we go. And so let me get it back perfect. to you. In the center. Oh, great. Okay. So you can see, here it is, right here. So now I can come in with a cover, a crimp cover, which I like. And I chose a um, antique silver crimp cover to go over it. Because it matches the clasp. And again, I need to get a little closer into my field of vision, sorry, so I can close it. And then I'll show you what I've got. We have, as I say, a really great tutorial on using the crimp covers. The crimp tubes. Um, it's a little uh, beyond what I want to demonstrate to you guys today. But you can see I've used our Zeron, essentially I've used my Zeron um, crimp, crimping plier to come in and help me just round that crimp cover right around my crimp tube. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to clip away my extra. So now I've got Jen's first connection connected. Okay. So that one. We're still running over on YouTube though, so oh, we're going to just wait for it to reconnect. If I could find the right crimp tube, sorry you guys. These guys are so small, I cannot see them. There we go. I put on my crimp tube and I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to put on my seed beads. And what did I use? I used 10, right? 
One, two, three, four, five. Why did I have to choose size elevens? They're so small. <laughs> Jenny, you can see them pretty well, right? You don't look. You don't have glasses. You can see no. perfectly. It's because you're you're a big A, and my eyes can't see them. Okay, let's see. Do I have ten? Let me count: two, four, six, eight, nine. One more. Minimus. There we go. Now I'm going to connect. I'm going to put in a connector, and I'm going to use that piece of join hands chain. Now we have to be real careful, you guys, when we are crimping this, when we're closing it up. We don't want everything to be too tight, okay? We want everything to have some movement to it. So see now, that's going to connect to that piece of chain right there. So I'm going to just crimp it. I've got some movement. You can see I've kind of made it into this U shape so it, it's not stiff. That's one of the things that could be a drawback with soft flex is if you crimp it and it's too stiff it won't um, be you know nice and movable nice and malleable so it'll be too stiff to wear okay <laughs> my mom just said middle-aged eyes bless you mom thanks ma <laughs> and I'm gonna come in I'm gonna crimp I think they're over middle-aged eyes I think I'm <laughs> I don't, I think I've passed middle You're right at the bottom already. Right. There we go. Is that better there, I think? And I'm going to come in and I'm going to close it up. And I'll go ahead and I'm going to put a crimp tube on. And I'm going to put a crimp tube on. Let me see. Where's that crimp tube? If I can get it, put it on, and then I'll crimp it to the other side. Okay, just like this. And we're going to do this here. And get that going. <laughs> Ellen says, she feels like she's in her 20s. She's actually 48, and her eyeballs are 98. I <laughs> agree with you, Ellen. It I does look like a lot of it still. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we can. I find uh, good lighting. If I am doing all of this where light is good, it's so much better. But, alrighty. So that should be close to 10 anyway. Now I'm going to do this again, just like I did before. Go in through that little segment of join hands. Come on around and through the crimp. I'm going to go back through the holes in these. The six millimeter is large enough to be able to put that thread back through. And I'm just going to come in and tighten everything up. Okay, so that'll be my second segment that's on here. And let me get in and come in. Oh, I, I broke one, but that's okay. It's because I wasn't, I didn't have an eye. But it was already fairly tight. So one seed beadless isn't going to make too much of a difference there. There we go. One of the hazards of working with the seed beads. So let me show you what we've got here. And Brandon, maybe you want to bring the camera up a little bit if we can just maybe straight up so we're out a little bit more. So can you see how that connection is there? It's just going to hang out right in the um, right in the strand to make it continuous. I want to turn it over like that. And so you can make this necklace as long as you'd like. As I say, Emily's is pretty long it's about 60 inches but this one here I already have 18 inches worth of necklace here going on with this so and then we'll just continue on so Jen you're making kind of a delicate little pattern there why don't we take a look at what you're stringing on that one also 
Yeah, with this one, I'm choosing, move over just a little bit. I think we're about right here where you want to be. Good. I'm choosing some smaller pieces because the other four strands are so heavy and they have all these bigger pieces. Mm -hmm. And so even something like this, if visually, if we lay this guy down, if you wanted to do like a multiple, like you could do two skinny strands and then connect those two to the same. Oh, I like that Right? Idea. That would be a good mm -hmm. idea, right? So this guy would connect here with your chain and you do two strands and then they'd connect over here. It would be nice to add some visual interest to that. I like it. So we'll add that one in um, to this piece. And then we've got, we still have Jen's two other sections to go. Um, but that's, that's all she wrote, you know, it's, um, it's looking pretty, uh, I think it's going to come together pretty nicely, I think. So is this a fun project? You enjoyed this one? This yeah. Stringy? Yeah, it's great. Well, we'll, we'll finish this whole thing up and we'll have Karen post it. Um, we'll finish stringing those two and then I'll crimp all of these together and then we'll be set. We'll be good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And it'll be pretty seamless um, on uh, on our replay. So thanks for sticking with us with our streaming. But Brand, we'll go ahead and we'll move that guy around. Okay, this is going to be an adventure. I'm going to need, well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Let's grab this for me, too. That's our uh, disconnect thing. We'll move that over. All right. There we go. We'll see what it looks like on the, on the, um, on the screen when we can see it because we're few. There we are. There we are. Look at that. They can see us. You know what? Move it over, Brandwin. That way, just a hair. That way. Okay, I am just a hair. There. Let's try that. See how we look. There we are. Sure All right. Yeah. Well, Facebook's catching up. My Facebook is, is caught up. So. All right. Well, you guys. That was awesome. Jen, you did such a good job. <laughs> Thank you all for bearing with me. Oh, you this did is, great. This is all new to me. <laughs> well, you know, here at Feed Shop, we just like to just jump on in. And so thank you so much. Well, and again, thanks also for you guys sticking uh, with us through our fun, uh, our always interesting broadcast. And we have seen that some of you have asked about our Karen. Karen is doing well. She's still on the mend. She's actually here today, back in her office, doing, you know, working hard. So, um, so she's doing well. So, um, as always, on a Wednesday, I don't know if you guys, I'm going to have you hold this one, Jen, so you can hold that one. It's coming up in the shot. Um, but uh, if you got your newsletter this morning, you saw that we have a kind of a one day super sale on stones. Um, and if you don't get our email, you guys, what are you waiting for? Jump over to beadshop.com after the broadcast, sign up on our email list and you'll be part of our newsletter, which is how we communicate with you the best. And we have, today is our stone sale. All stones are 25% off. When you add to, uh, in the coupon box, all of our gem and earth stones will be 25% off. It ends tonight. Today is the 20th of March, first day of spring. Welcome spring. Uh, yes, that. me too. Uh, so it expires midnight Pacific time tonight. So that's it. Um, it was great again. Jen, thanks so much. I hope it's not the last time you'll be on here with me. I hope not either. Okay, good. Hopefully next time I'll um, know a little more what I'm doing. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know what? You faked it pretty well. I don't think anyone knew that you didn't know that. I'm uh, a job. And it's really fun. So we'll put the rest of these guys together. Um, and you guys will see this in the finished notes and we'll have Karen post it up on the web. So next week, you guys, we've got Miss Emily Miller in the house. We're going to be doing, and I should have showed this while we were more uh, facing down, but you guys will see this. This is um, her herringbone wrap. And, you know, Emily, as always, and you may have heard me say this before, when I said, Em, we've got to do this herringbone with this. We're still, we're still, we're still, we're still, so, so I would go ahead and just turn it off from the top.